Using a mist of synthetic sweat, the corrosion test exposes strings to elements mimicking a human finger. Over time, excess remains strong, while other strings corrode and become damaged. Testing complete. I'm John Bolger with Premier Guitar. We're at SoundSage Studio and I'm with my friend Derek Wells. Derek Wells, session ace, hit producer, <laughs> all, badass guitarist, and all around great guy. Mm. Derek, thanks for inviting us to work today. Great to see you again, man. Yeah, great, great seeing see you. you. Great to see you. So you are you are hunkered in the studio all the time, man. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been you know, the, almost two decades of my life now at this point. You know? Right. Like, yeah. like we, we go way back and yeah. uh, like back to your road days. And that's, mm -hmm. but that's been like 20 years ago. Now. Yeah. It's, it's like I was, I was, we were talking about before. It's yeah. like, I, I, I really feel like at this point I've heard my guitar more through headphones than I <laughs> have not, you know, than I've stood in front of it or stood on a stage or whatever, which is a strange thing, but yeah. It's yeah. the it's the it's the the nature of the gig these days. So. Right. Well, and when you broke into the studio thing, you were a kid, man, which is shocking. Well, well, I would I would use the term "broke in" pretty loosely, <laughs> but 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 yeah, I mean, it, it definitely you know I was you know in my you know, mid twenties or whatever when I started trying to you know yeah. be aggressive about it. I'll, I'll say yeah. that you know, but I don't know that any breaking happened for quite a while. <laughs> it may still be hasn't happened possibly. Yeah, so. Oh well, God, and the production man, the Hardy, Maddie, and Tay, and and everything else. I mean, huge. It, well, you know, it, it all of that still just stemmed from playing guitar. You yeah. know, you, you work with people enough and you collaborate on the right things, and eventually they'll, you know, they seem to just kind of ask to to you know be in a larger role or whatever and. And just walk through the doors as they open, man. <laughs> right, man. That's it. Walk through the doors as they open. I, I, I can't. I, don't, I can't control which ones open. And sometimes I've walked through and gotten my ass beat. But yeah, <laughs> you, walk, part of, you walk through the ones that are open. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Well, hey, let's start with this very cool. Is this? Is this a '61? This is. This is a. This is your '19 and '61 Les Paul Gibson SG. Uh, Named not by me, by all, all of our friends, Uncle Larry, <laughs> Brother Tom Bukovac. Uh, this is the Cash Cow. Oh. Um, and this guitar has been, um, Tom is definitely the, I would, you know, call it the, the, the proprietor of this guitar in the, in the beginning. And it passed hands a, a little bit. Um, a great steel guitar player, Russ Paul, owned it oh, for a little while sure. and sold it back to sold it back to Tom and and um, I kind of pined over it for years and and then eventually Tom called me one day and said all right I'm I'm, I'm, ready. I'm ready you do you, you want it I'm calling you first and I was like I, yeah, of course you know that's great and uh, and bought this guitar and have used it ever since and it's definitely one of those things that like I mean between what Tom played it on and what I've played it on and you know I, like I just feel like at some point I need to just sell this to another session guy <laughs> younger than me like this isn't one you keep for your family it's like I just care I'm the current caretaker right. of the cash cow and then eventually the cow will go to somebody else you right know? right it's yeah. kinda, it feels like one of those instruments but yeah. a really great really great guitar so is it is it are the original pickups yeah uh, as far as I know it's all original it had a headstock crack at some point they all do yeah and um even this, the rattly ass tailpiece here, you know, it's, it, which by the way, I have kind of locked down. There's, oh. there's a conversation about, you know, these old Vibrola trims, this trim arm is what it was supposed to be. I, I mean, at least in my opinion, and I feel like this is shared by a lot of guys, it, it just wasn't one of their best designs. Right. It's, it's, it's not really great for tuning. Um, you know, they're and, an innovative company and sometimes you miss. That's right. <laughs> Um, but I do think that there is some magic to the mass that it adds at the back of the body in right. terms of the tonality of these guitars. Um, you know, you also notice a lot of times with SGs, they can be real top heavy. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll tip this way. And I feel like these, with these, these maestro tail pieces, they, they seem to be a little more balanced. Uh, it's pretty geeky. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I have this one kind of locked where it, it just kind of won't move. Yeah. There, I've even seen, I didn't do it on this one, but I've seen online where they sell like these 
kind of like prefab steel blocks you can put in there that the strings will go through and you can lock those down. Um, but yeah, just a really, really great guitar, really clean. Um, it's a good reminder that like the Gibson guitars... <laughs> That they, you know, they weren't designed to be like rock and roll instruments necessarily. Oh yeah. You know, and um, and a lot of good, uh, a lot of great, you know, the thing about to me about a, a good vintage Gibson guitar, is they're not overtly, you know, high gain or high output. You know, I have versions of that yeah. that I'll go to, you know, when demanded. But these kinds of, you know, guitars, you know, you can understand why, you know, that's like the sound on songs like Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. It wasn't all Guns N' Roses, you know what right, I mean? It's not, right. um, and so this guitar is just a really great all around guitar. It's got a great low E string for a, like a oh, super yeah. snappy low. Yeah, for, like, for a Gibson guitar, it's that a, snappy of a bottom, like it's just a really great guitar, really balanced, the neck pickup sounds great on it. Just a really, this is a well-earned title, the Cash Cow. Yeah. yeah. That's, so what strings do you run on it? I play 11s across the board. Really? Diodario 11 to 49s. The, uh, what, what, what uh, flavor? The, the nickel wound. Okay. Yeah, the, the nickel EXL Diodario 11 to 49s. And, and man, like, you know, they were the, the NYXLs, and I don't know what version of the newest yeah. thing they are now. I just always like the the regular old ones that right. they that I've played since I was young. And <laughs> yeah. they, they seem to tune great and sound great for me. You know, yeah. it's um, and uh, I I don't deny that some guys have heard the difference or experienced the difference, but for me, I I never had any reason to. I tried the other ones. I was like, yeah, I feel like strings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> These right. are great. You know, so I, yeah, I just but every. Yeah, every guitar I own, you know, short of the baritone, are, are going to have 11s on yeah. 11 to 49 system. I never, also never got into the like changing a lot of gauges for for different guitars. Yeah. Because and, and you know I totally understand why some people do that, especially if you feel like you have a home base. But doing what I do and the kind of chameleon nature of of being a you know a, a gun for hire kind of thing is like. I appreciate that the different string tensions on different guitars, you know, inspire me to place a certain way or certain parts. And so like a guitar being a little slinkier or a guitar being a little stiffer, those will make me play certain ways or think of certain parts or whatever. And so, you know, to me, if they all played exactly the same or pretty close to the exact same, I, I, I feel like somehow I would feel less inspired. Yeah. So. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah it's like, what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, all, yeah. 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 Just play one. Yeah. If yeah. You want, exactly. If you want them to all feel like this one, just play that one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, that's okay. That is an excellent start. Let's uh, jump through your arsenal over here a little bit more. Should we keep it in the Gibson world? Or um, yeah. We'll do, we do that. Yeah. So the. Uh, I'll roadie for oh, you. Oh <laughs> gosh. Yeah. I'll hand you this guy. You um, hand me. This guy? So I rotate, you know, between, you know, I guess this is what we would call my cartridge rig, you know, here in town. And it's like between the house and my my personal studio, which is in a different location. And then, you know, what lives in the vault here and travels with all this gear. It's, I try to rotate a little bit. You know, I'm not always as 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 great about, you know, moving guitars around as, as much as I should be. But again, in, in kind of an effort to, to keep it fresh, it's like. Sometimes if I feel like I've been playing a guitar a little too much, I'll take it home or something and swap yeah. it out for something just to make sure I'm, you know, playing something else. Um, this guitar is a good example of one that on paper shouldn't be anything special. It's a 2008 gold top. It's chambered, so it's a little light. Um, but the the whole thing with this was uh, there was a buddy of mine that that lived in town that was an engineer and this was his guitar and whenever i would be at his place where i would grab it and play it and i i was always like man this guitar is always in tune it just like it it's a good it's just a good one right yeah. it's just a good one and i told him for years hey man if you ever want to sell that guitar just holler at me and he called me one day say yeah i think i'm gonna sell it man i just never play it's like i will i'll be at your house in a few minutes and i bought this Bought this guitar and I played it as is for for quite a while and then I um, 
started getting kind of serious about some more vintage acquisitions. Yeah. And uh, I just decided to, you know, without really probably knowing as much as I should, decided to try to go get a real PAF for this guitar, which I was able to do. And then kind of stupidly, because I just didn't know any better at the time, I just had them, it was an uncovered PAF, I want to say from like 1960. I spent more on that pickup than the guitar cost sure. at that time. God. I, and um, and then, I mean, we're talking 15 years ago still, whatever, yeah, yeah. but like, um, anyways, point is, is I, I just told the guy, I was like, hey, just put the, I don't like the uncovered one. Can you just put the cover back on? Yeah. And I'm sure there's people that are like, no, uh, but I, 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 I always think I it sounds. It. I just, I just like covers. Well, and I, and I never heard it the other way, really. Yeah, yeah. So I guess maybe ignorance is bliss. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it sounded great, and so, so the the neck pickup is actually a, uh, if memory, it's been a long time, but I'm pretty sure this is a Fralin, Lindy Fralin PAF, because um, I definitely loved those pickups for a long time and used those in a lot of guitars, and then I it, it just did this, and it, it has the the 50s wiring kind of thing too, which for, if guys don't know about that, it basically, you know, kind of some of the, the values of the capacitors and the pots that Gibson has used in the more modern era aren't the same values that they were in the old way. And so some of the interactivity of the volume and tone knobs, it, it's kind of like if you, if you want it to be like an old one, yeah. that's part of the thing too. And it, right. in my opinion, kind of opens these guitars up. And again, you know, you can tell, by itself, this is a pretty clean sounding guitar. It's not like overtly, you know, overdriven or anything. You know, real, real articulate, but if you step on, you know, an overdrive or something. Yeah, that's great. Off. You know, and then certainly if you start stacking stuff on it. You know, they, they it'll they definitely will get there. You know, yeah. you can definitely gain them up. Yeah. Um, eventually, you start running into like a noise floor issue, but um, it's again, it's just one of those guitars that like always stays in tune. Like this guitar is always in tune. It's always in tune. I don't f wrestle it during the change of the seasons, which is if if you live in humid areas and seasonal spots like Nashville, it's a battle we fight all the time. Right. You know, you walk in after few days of rain or whatever and the strings are just laying on the fretboard and yeah it's right? the worst um but yeah this has just been one of those workhorse guitars that has has stayed in the in the lineup for years and years and years because it it you know even, I, even i'll get away from it and then i'll come back to it and go yeah it's just got that thing it's just and even for a chambered guitar it's just got a real meaty bottom end that you <laughs> That, you know, you just can't, not all, they're not all made equal, you yeah. know? So when you find one that feels that way, you know, you just hang on to it. Yeah, it's not amazing, the the variety, how, okay, we just heard a PAF yeah. there and a PAF, a PAF there, right. totally different. Yeah, I mean, like, that's why, I mean, and we could go down that rabbit hole of like, you know, the, the, the amount of wines that might have been different right. on that one versus this, but it's also just like, a different wood, man. Yeah, right. If you, you know, if we just swapped these pickups and these guitars, I bet they would still sound like say, like pretty like similar. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like as it's just so much of it is the is the wood and the the marriage of that thing, you know. Yeah, so. it's it, yeah. That's the wonderful thing about it. It's just it's just kind of magic. Some yeah. of them work. But I, but I'll say this on electric guitars. I'm a big like. I always just play them acoustic. Yeah. Because, like, to me, if they're if they're alive, right? If they've got that thing without going through an amp, dude, I can futz with the pickups or the the you know the pots or the you know whatever. I can go down that road. Right. And who knows? Maybe I never get there. Yeah. But when you pick up one the acoustic that's just a dog, there ain't no pick up on the planet you right. can buy that's going to save your ass on that it's, yeah that guitar is a dog and will always be a dog <laughs> yeah yeah some turds can't be polished that's exactly right that's, yeah. that's exactly right yeah yeah, yeah. 
Okay, well that's very cool. Let's. What's next on the um, on our on our show and tell? Well, uh, I will just we'll just go down the line. Hand me that baritone. So. Oh yeah. So this is a guitar that I use a bunch. That. Uh, you kind of got to have them, right? Man, yeah. If you don't have them, they'll ask for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, it's just kind of one of those things like there is nothing special about this this guitar on paper. This is a, I think at the time I paid 350 bucks for it or something like that at a, at a, actually I bought it at the guitar show at the fairgrounds here. Oh yeah. One weekend I was down there and the, the company had it and they're like 350 with a gig bag. I said sold. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, you know, man, there's just something about, I've got a few different versions of, of Dan, of, you know, of uh, baritone guitars. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've got some that are uh, you know maybe geared a little more towards the the harder modern rock stuff where they're they're aggressive humbucker guitars that just happen to be baritone. They're strung down low. And we use that on some of the you know more hard rock or, or modern stuff that I'm doing. Um, but this guitar, as just kind of an all around, you know, it just sounds like what you want a baritone to sound like, in my opinion. And it's like, man, you just put a little bit of, you know, you put a little tremolo and a little bit of reverb on something and you're. It's like, you're there, like that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's just, it's just, you know, all that. So, yeah. um, uh, and then it's a cool, you know, the middle position is a fun thing too, and you can blend that, but the middle is a little bit darker, a little, a little bit darker, a little rounder. So it's just got that thing. And then, you know, it will get aggressive too, you know, the, these uh, little, little guitar playing outfit by the name of Led Zeppelin, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Page used to play these lipstick pickups on stuff and made them sound pretty great. But you know, again, yeah. if you just put a little bit of overdrive. <laughs> you know, so it's a, it'll do a lot of things, man. It's a, a surprisingly versatile instrument. And, um, oh, here's a cool thing. I, I undersold this guitar. The guy in town, Jeff Sin, original Sin guitars, Jeff Sin guitars, dear friend of mine, um, he fabricated this bridge for me, and you can buy them from him on his website, and it's um, essentially, the, the bridges on these standard are kind of like a floating bridge. Right. Kind of their Achilles heel. Because you and, dig into them, a string will pop off. Yeah, and yeah. Jeff also just kind of had this, you know, thought that like, man, I just feel like you'd get so much more resonance out of the guitar if it, if it, if the bridge was flush with the body. And man, was he right. Huh. And um, and he, uh, you know, and then I, you know, went ahead and had him do brass saddles. But this is just a, it's a plug and play. You know, it's like a no, no extra screws required. You just put this thing on. Screw it in. Uh, my other one of these has it too, and that really did. It's been years ago that I did that, but it really did elevate the. You know, it, it kind of all the overtones started to come out of this guitar, and it went from being a like, oh, this is cool. It's definitely the sound of old records. To like, oh wow, this is like an instrument, right? You know, yeah. And he even makes one that has like the wood saddles, which would be you know the, the yeah. original yeah. Dano thing. If you wanted to put like flat wound you know, and go that way, you know, he makes some options, but Jeff Sin guitars, he makes these bridges and it's, it's really great. Oh, that's, that's a cool tidbit because yeah, yeah that, 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 that little strip of, I guess, rosewood that they put on some of them. It's yep. so it's weird. part of the, it's, but it's part of the sound part and of their charm. slotted. And yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely a thing, but th for me again, in terms of, you know, mild versatility, th this just went from, being like, that's a thing to like, oh, this is an instrument I can use yeah, a lot. Yeah, a little less toy, a little more instrument. Especially on the top strings when you just yeah. get that. Ooh. Yeah. That's a really even ringing yeah. Yeah. baritone guitar, you know, and it, I, I don't feel like it quite had that that body before this thing. So yeah. it's a good, good Okay, that's a secret ingredient. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
And trust me, I need the secret ingredients. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it's, the secret ingredients. It takes all this shit to make me sound good. <laughs> well, mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Gretsch. Yeah, try um, this guy. Uh, I bought this guitar on Craigslist. Remember Craigslist, kids? Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Craig's still got a list. It's not quite as list. popular as it used to be. He still has a list, though. Yeah. Um, there was a, uh, uh, God rest his soul, J.T. Cornfloss. Oh, was yeah, one of my I remember him well. Heroes and, and a mentor to me and just one of the, you know, truly one of the like first guitar players that I looked up to and also one of the first guys in this town that was like super cool to me. Yeah. He just had a, his tone was so in his hands. He could have yeah. played anything. He'd sound like J.T. Right. But when he would pick up a 6120, he had just this kind of magic, like, this verb and this thing and he his hands on that guitar with it it was just like to me one of those like light bulb tones where i just went like how is he doing this and he i'd ask him about it he'd be like well it's just that i'd look and i knew him for years and years and years before he passed i'd be like this doesn't make any sense but you know before i just gave up trying to to sound like him i immediately went and bought one of these guitars and um uh I actually went through, man, maybe three or four. I bought three or four vintage Gretches, different versions. I bought all these old ones. They're all weird and messed up. The frets aren't in the right spot. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just impossible to tune. And with what I do every day, like intonation, like if you if you're not in tune, it's it's a non-starter. Like yeah. you do, you do not sit in this chair if you can't play in tune. Right. right. If your instruments won't tune, and you know, there's. There's tolerances and all that stuff. No sure. guitar is ever perfectly in tune. I'm, you, I'm very aware of that. But man, bottom line is, I fought and wrestled so many vintage ones, and I finally just bought a reissue on Craigslist. Yeah. And this has been the best one I've ever had. Um, I've got another similar one at my studio that's the Anniversary Green, but um, this guitar, it's got the TV Jones pickups in it. Um, and... You know, it, it's funny, people, I, you know, people, a lot of people will talk about these guitars and they'll reference Chris Isaac with Wicked Game, which actually was not a Gretsch, it was a Strat, a strat right? Yeah. Um, but there is something about, I think, maybe just the trim arm on these guitars. Right. And it's easy to understand why they, you know, might, might kind of lean that way, because if you, you know, you zhuzh it up a little bit with just some delay and reverb. <laughs> That's great. Well, you get, you know, you, you totally see how people, you know, and, and it's fun to use that way. And it's, it's, a, it's a really great thing. But they're also just really good kind of all around guitars, especially when you, how do I word this? Like sometimes on a track, like when you're playing electric guitar on, on music, it's not always a guitar song. Right. At least what I do. Yeah. Right. And. There's something about this guitar and I think a lot of these guitars that they sit in a really specific way in a mix and you can, you know, kind of fill this role of, you know, enhancing things around you and kind of filling space in the mid-range and whatever and the sonic, you know, landscape there that without stepping out too much, they have a very, at least in my opinion, on their own, they have a very like subdued, you know, but organic like natural kind of quality to them and it's just one of these guitars that makes me makes me play different now yeah granted you can go full stray cats and you can sure. crank the amps up and you can definitely hype these guitars but it's in my opinion that like when in their kind of natural setting and you know i'm switching all these these guitars and i'm not touching the amp you know this is all just the same setting on the amp yeah it's like it has a subtle thing that's just really kind of let me turn all this stuff off but like And 
it's like a, and the other cool thing you can do about these is they've got this, you know, I kind of think of it as one blanket, two blankets, but it's got this kind of dimmer knob thing. Right. So here's with it off. Here's the one blanket. Here's two blankets. Oh, sorry, I had it backwards. Yeah. This is one blanket. Here's natural. Here's two blankets. And sometimes, man, when you're in the the weeds and you're trying to speak in a real p specific spot in a track, that that ability to just kind of quick, you know, roll some top off and do some of that stuff is a can be right. really cool to kind of limit pick attack or whatever. You know, I mean, it's all just kind of like. I'm always just going, oh, does this sound cool? Oh, that sounds cool. Okay, go. Right. But, um, but it's a cool right. tribute of, of this guitar, and, um, and these guitars can rock, and they're good for country. They can twang. They can do all that stuff. But the, the vibe, the, the, you know, obviously. That's the money. Yeah. You know. That's the, you know, that's yeah. the fun thing. That's what everyone wants to do. And I like that you use the mud switch, because I don't know anybody that oh, does. Oh, dude. Cause I it, cause the mud all switch the time. can get you in trouble. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's time and place, yeah, you know, yeah. but it's... Um, it's the inadvertently turning it on. Yeah, yeah, good. you don't want to... Well, that's, <laughs> some of those have just like a kill switch down yeah. here, and I'm like, who wanted it? Yeah. 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 Hey, get, put a switch on the guitar, too, that... It can go two ways, and both of them turn the guitar off. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. That's not the... Um, but I love Gretsch guitars, and I, I've got a bunch of these um, different versions, but the, the 6120, man, it just, it's a... Gotta have one. Yeah. Have. And again, this is a... Man, this is a made in Japan, I think early 2000s. Yeah. Not, a, not some crazy vintage piece, you know. And, and I've never done anything. To it, I do think these bridges come floating normal, and I have it glued down. Yeah, glued that's down, a good decision. Glue yeah. down, cinematic bridge. And I remember the first time I changed all the strings, it just flew off. Like, oh God, what, <laughs> yeah. have, I, what like, have I done? I think it was you're just around... looking for the dust marks where yeah, you can try right, to get it right. back. Um, but yeah, really, really great guitar too. Again, stays in tune. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Let's go to this one. Oh, oh, this guy. They won't let you in Nashville without that thing. Yeah. So this is this is your uh, 19 and 53 Fender Telecaster. Um, not all original. Um, in fact, this this guitar has been abused on a lot of levels. Um, but it um, 1953 neck and body. A lot of the hardware has been replaced, and the pickups, um, again, the neck pickup is a, if I recall, Lindy Fralin, just the vintage Tele um, pickup. Um, and But the bridge pickup in this guitar is actually pulled out of an old Fender lap steel. Really? Cool. Yeah, in the, so that's the, that's the Don Rich thing was in from Buck Owens band is if um, he used to pull uh, in the late 50s or I guess it would be the early 50s they when the lap steels the Telecaster pickup and the lap steel pickups were the exact same size they yeah. just kind of tweaked the magnets or I guess huh. the, the wraps but I'd read in a thing that Don Rich used to pull the pull the the pickups out of Fender lap steels and put them in his Telecasters oh, that's so and I asked cool. a couple guys you know much older than me that would have been from that era that knew and they were like, yeah, totally he did that. So that's what I did with this guitar, um, again, just kind of years ago. And, um, oh, I'm doing that, yeah. Just real snappy. And uh, yeah, all that topic. But it also sounds, um, so there's this, I mean, and these strings are actually kind of dead for my taste, but it's just totally got all that stuff. All the stuff you want to tell you to do, and then it'll still do the rocking thing. Um, and this is, you know, I would say, I'm not really sentimental about instruments, but I, I, I would say that if there was... You know, if I sold every guitar I owned tomorrow, this would probably be the one I didn't sell. And it's uh, it's just one of those guitars that just 
never needs anything. It's like always in tune. It, it always sounds good in the track. Like when nothing else is right that day, this guitar sounds right. Right. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and on way more than just like kind of standard country, you know, way more than chicken picking, it does all that stuff, but it's just a really, really good instrument that I feel really lucky to, to, have, to have owned for a long, long time. And um, yeah, this is, it's also one of the guitars I've had the longest in my life. So, uh, I, I, and th this maybe, maybe has probably been on more records than any other guitar I have. It'd be close, but. Well, isn't it funny it. though, like in your career odyssey, how, like the telly was kind of the sound for everything people were doing. Here oh for, man! Yeah. I mean, thanks to you know, I mean, well, you know, Brent Mason and everybody was chasing that, and he. Oh yeah, I mean, Brent obviously, like God. he, you know, yeah. he, you know, completely changed the face of country music. I mean, you know, yeah, before that, obviously, you know, Waylon Jennings and yeah, you know, Buck Owens and stuff. Like the telly was always a thing, and then Brent made it this whole other thing, right? Um, which was incredible, and you know that guy's just unbelievable and a legend. Um, but then, you know, what's funny for me is we talked about like my kind of you know main road gig when I was really young was this guy Josh Turner, and it was all real traditional. It was yeah. Brent played on those records. Yeah. It was, and then JT played on some of the later ones, but it was very traditional, all Telecaster. Right. And that was my whole gig. And then about the time I came off the road. There was this shift, at least in Nashville, and people were really getting a, away from that. Right. And, you know, I had to, you know, I think part of my session journey was like convincing people that I did something that wasn't that because most people associated me with Josh's right. thing. And, um, and, and, uh, but I'm so thankful because the cyclical nature of music. You know, I would say, especially even in the last five years, like it started to feel like it's coming back or at least people are, are more open to, you know, kind of traditional country guitar sounds. And, and I'm like, oh, great. I didn't, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, I love doing that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I felt like I didn't get to for a long time. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so it's, it's really fun. But like I said, even in that period when people didn't want, you know, want necessarily like well, let's call it more the 90s country sound. This guitar I still used all the time. Sure. It's just such a great guitar. Uh -huh. Such a great. And th this one, you know, we talk about guitars that feel like home bass. This is probably the most home bass feeling for me. You know? So, okay, when, you, when you're starting a session and you, uh, you hear the song, do you find the challenge in the beginning is just like picking, your, picking the guitar for it or, or picking the effect or the, or the amp or the... Where does it start for you? Because that's always kind of a yeah. kind of a thing, right? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's you know, I try to not have too many preconceived notions about yeah. stuff, and and it's all very reactive to me. I'll hear a song in the control room, you know, whatever it is, we listen to the chart, whatever, and and and, and I'll pretty quickly walk out here, and I don't spend a lot of time between here and the song and like getting in my chair. Yeah, and. There's typically just some version of something that I'm hearing in my head that's just an instinct that they could say they hate it in a few minutes, but <laughs> yeah. there's something in my mind that I'm chasing. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, I kind of make a, a quick decision, gut decision about a guitar and an amp and I've figured it out. And, and then based on the part, do I feel like it is, it, is it a dry thing? Is it, you know, where's my head at with it? And so, you know, I'm essentially just doing a you know, a pretty quick mock-up of here's where my head is at. Yeah. And that's a lot of the, you know, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes before everyone plays, you're out here fooling around with something and they're going, hey, Derek's on it. That's cool. That's the, that's our intro or whatever. Yeah. You get lucky. Sometimes you, you spend a take or two chasing something and you're like, man, this is, I'm, I'm actually, this is not it. This yeah. is, I'm not the guy. Like this is, this is, you know, not necessarily, not the, uh, the not like they hired the wrong guy to say, but you're like, this isn't the right character for this song right. or this track or, or I'm, I'm misinterpreting this or whatever. And, you, and then there's all kinds of shades in between those things. But, right. but yeah, it's always just like I hear a song, something starts to kind of wheel in my head and I walk out here and start trying to kind of like, you know, mark my territory for lack of a better word. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm trying to kind of broadcast to the room, hey, here's where my head is at. Right. Say no, you know, someone stop me if you think I'm, if I'm chasing, if I'm going down the wrong path. Yeah. 
stop me now, yeah. or you know, maybe let me hang myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, who right. knows? You know. Yeah, um, let's see where it goes. But yeah, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty quick, pretty quick process for me, and it's just all, it's all just reaction. Yeah, and that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And then I think the last one over here. Yeah, the old doozy here. Yeah, the she's a doozy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, God, man, this is light. And right? that's crazy, right? Oh wow, that's a special guitar. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, um, there's a producer that I worked with. Um, I still work with this day named Frank Rogers, who's awesome producer and, and has made a lot of records and he's got a great guitar collection himself. He's a guitar collector. His dad's an old guitar collector. They, they're guitar heads. And uh, when I started working for Frank years and years ago, um, I would go to his house to do overdubs and I would take some stuff, but he had just a, he's got this wall of guitars. And um, he had a Duesenberg just like this, except it was a sunburst um, guitar. And, you know, sometimes in our, you know, escapades of tone searching, he, I'd be trying some stuff and I'd try a couple of my guitars we'd try. And every once in a while, he'd get his guitar off the wall and this one and he'd, he'd try this. Okay. And it was just kind of one of those instruments that we seemed to kind of always be like, yeah, that sounds great. That's a cool thing for this part. And you, especially like, kind of jangly power chords or whatever the case was. And um, I uh, played his enough times that I finally was like, I've, I've got to buy one yeah. of these myself. And the, at the time, the, the palm benders thing here were, were very inconsequential. I, I was like, well, they're on there. Yeah. Um, but I have since very much... Um, you know, come to, come to use these a lot in my, you know, daily tone travels, um, uh, because they're they're really great for imitating some of the pedal steel maneuvers that we all know love. You know, all these kinds of right. you know the. All that kind of stuff is fun. Oh yeah, dreamy. Yeah, it's just a it's just a fun kind of like, you know, tool in the toolbox to to mess around with, you sure. know, and you can you can have all that kind of stuff. So I, I I geek around and play some of those some of those things, or even just be with your you know hands, you know, just some of that stuff too, yeah. which is fun to do. Oh, so um, great. And uh, I, I use the the B a lot more than I use the G, but it's um, but it's all fun and and. Uh, uh, and it's also too just a great sounding guitar, like for regular guitar stuff. I do this all the time. Put my pick down. Put it right there where that slide was. <laughs> but it's um, uh, uh. Oh, let me do this real quick. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also just a great um, just a great all around guitar. <laughs> Just a cool, just a you know, cool kind of rock and roll guitar. The neck pickup is really sweet on these things too, where you can do this, you know, this kind of. You know, good, or even, you know, the, all that kind of stuff is. Yeah. Just good sounding, good good sounding all around guitars, and again, it stays in tune. Yeah, that's a that's that's fa okay. Great <sighs> lineup. Insulated. That'll get it all done. Yeah, yeah, yeah God, it should. Yeah. Now let's <sighs> let's talk about amps okay. a little bit. And yeah. and uh, so right now you're going through that Super Black Magic, right? I'm playing this. Yeah. Um, I bought this amp. I don't know. Probably about the time they came out. Um, uh, because I, I went into a store and played one and, and uh, they had a combo and I was like This sounds all uh, this was just was just an inspired. I was like I'm having fun playing this amp I thought yeah. the tremolo was cool on it. Yeah, and um, I was like man I wish they made that in the head and they were like they do you can get you know, <laughs> and so um, 
so I bought that thing, um, you know, however many years ago. And it, again, it's just a great kind of, you know, all of these amps, I mean, we can talk about them individually, but like for me, um, you know, there's no better or worse. They're all just different. Sure. And that's the beauty of it for me. And again, in this kind of like tonal chase that I'm, you know, in this spot where I'm playing these parts in, in a lot of times, you know, pretty dense sounding records, you're just looking for combinations that speak or feel right, or kind of to my point earlier, that make me play in the vein of the character that I'm trying to kind of, right. kind of be, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, can I chicken pick through the clean Marshall? Like, yeah, you can. Yeah. There's a thing there, but I don't know that it, it scratches like the most authentic version of that for me. Right. Um, and so, you know, like m most all of these amps, I could, if I only had one, I could go do a session. I could play cool parts on a record. Yeah. This is just the benefit of collecting gear over years and years and years and <laughs> yeah. years. And, you're, you know, you're, it's, you know, you could do it with the eight color set of crayons. I'm lucky I've been doing it long and I've kind of got the 64 pack now. Yeah. And so you can, you can make those switches if you want, you know. Um, but yeah, this, this, this is just a, a really, again, a really good all around amp. I love to play slide through this amp turned up. And I love the, I love the, the tremolo on this amp. Uh, and, and what's, what's fun about amp tremolo too, is if you're, you know, and I kind of learned this from Leslie players, you get a different thing when you send the reverb through the tremolo. There's a, Because even the tail of the trim is, or even the tail of the reverb is getting the trim. Right. And it, it's like I always learned that from the Leslie guys that, you know, had the built-in reverb on the Hammonds. And then if you run the verb through the spinning speaker, it's a different sound than putting reverb like on after the fact. Wow. You know, that brings up such an interesting point because in your world, you really can get into the nuance of everything. I mean, it's all about nuance because you're, I mean, yeah. you're listening on headphones. Yeah. You're hearing exactly what it's like. Now, live, nuance is, is yeah, yeah. What totally you, it's, lost. It's just a completely different. Yeah. And, and again, it's no better or worse. It's like, I, it's like, you know, in the Olympics, there's, there's sprinters and there's mile runners and yeah. there's long, you know, it's all like you, it's, it's you're operating at all at a high level all the time, but there are different. I do think that there are sometimes just different considerations yeah. when you're in the in the studio than, than there are when you're playing live. Like you know? a subtly like that, I think in the heat of battle live, you'd, it would never even occur to you because you, you're just trying to hang on. Well, know? and again, <laughs> and I can't overstate it, you know, some of these choices are, you know, stem from the, the luxury that I'm afforded of having all these choices. Yeah. And it, you know, that's, you know, like I said, it's like I, Maybe ignorance is bliss. There's times when I think that the best guitar player I ever was was when I, you know, had a deluxe reverb and a couple guitars. <laughs> and, you know, there's probably some truth there. Um, but, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's all about just continuing my own education and ability to learn and all this kind of stuff. Right. And sometimes you, you find a different way to do something and you go, I don't know if that's any better. And then occasionally you find a different way of doing something and you go, that's way better. I can't believe I've been doing it like this for this long. <laughs> right. It's all just part of the part of the process. Yeah. Okay, so the Supro, an excellent start, and that's right into that matchless cabinet right now. Yeah, so the, the way my rig is set up is I have two, in this big A rig, I have two cabinets that I've got that matchless 112 and I've got a Bogner 412. And I have two lines run um, and uh, and I kind of pick and choose combinations of amps and cabinets via V that. So it, again, there's not a, there maybe are a few combinations I've earmarked as being like that, that's pretty, that one actually feels a little special. Yeah. But sometimes the decisions I make about, you know, which amp I'm going to run to which cabinet, it, sometimes it just boils down to like workflow things in the moment. Yeah. And um, so again, there's not a ton of like, you know, logic b behind how I do that. I've stumbled on some magic combinations, but, but the idea from that stems from, um, as I, especially as I started to do some more of this kind of like, 
music that leans towards modern rock or or even just some of the more pop facing stuff like you realize like the scene changing elements um in your sounds had to kind of be quick and you, you'd go from these the hardy records are a good example where right. i'll go from these pretty affected clean sounds um to like it's the triple rec on yeah. the chorus and so a lot of this stuff was birthed out of man it'd be great for me and for the engineers and everybody if like you know we could dial up this huge big loud chorus sound and let them set eqs and all that stuff and then separately have a whole different amp and cabinet that they've got set up and eq then we can i can clean the tone up and i can eq that the way i want it and so i can you know basically and then with this switcher which we can talk about at some point but like that i can just go from oh here's this cool verse part with all this kind of gack on it to like and there's my triple wreck. Right, right. And we're dry and we're rocking. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so that's the that's the idea behind the two cabs. It's it's more of a switching. Again, it's a workflow thing for me. Yeah. Than than you know total sonic hunt. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. Well, and the and the the cool thing about I mean those Hardy records you you I think the fact that as a guitar player you're producing them you're able to take that luxury of like finding. Take yeah. some chances yeah. that maybe if somebody else was producing, you couldn't have taken those chances. Yeah, there everyone everyone involved in those were on board, and like speaking against Joy Moy, who who you know I'm I'm lucky enough to do those records with. He's an amazing producer. Yeah, and it's God, like that dude has had a yeah. run. Man. And he goes from he comes from Rock World too, so yeah. like you know we you know we both like love the Black Album, so <laughs> yeah. like you know it's like we yeah. you know we definitely when it came time to doing like those rock guitars and and even, like I said even on non country stuff that I play on it's like. You, you, I, you just you want it to be authentic. Like, my whole philosophy is like I never want to feel like I'm the wrong guy in the band. Right, right. And so like, if you're gonna do the rock thing, like you don't want to sound like the bad imitation version, right. the karaoke version of the rock band. You want real rock guys to be like, yeah, that's legit. Right. And it's the same thing if you're playing real country music. You yeah. want the real stone country dudes to say, yeah, that's legit. And and so, you know, at least that's just my philosophy. No, I, I totally agree. I mean, there's some things, like there's sometimes I feel like, like you can hear my accent, totally. which I don't, which I don't necessarily, which, yeah. which I, at this point I kind of lean into it, but I know yeah. I'm not right for some things because yeah. you can hear my accent. You know? Well, there's like, to me, that's how you like, you know, not to oversimplify people's art, but like, I do think that, you know, instrumentalists will typically land on one side of this line where you are either kind of a chameleon, yeah. or you're, you know, what I call a stylist. Yeah. And I think really great examples of that are guys like Derek Trucks or Mark oh, Knopfler, where right. like they're brilliant guitar players and their voice is so strong that like, you you know, whatever they do, you know, if they come feature on a song, like of course you know it's, it's musical them. and it's service to song, but you you know it's yeah. them. And that's amazing. Yeah, there is their their signature is they, they can't get away from it. Right, and then there's guys like like me that uh, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I, some I, my wife will ask me, "Did you play on this?" And I have to think about it. <laughs> yeah. And and sometimes even from the playing, I'll listen and I'll go, mm, and you know, I've got a few tells, mm. but that's me. And and you know, so so again, like, but from a philosophy standpoint, to your point about the accent thing, like. I try. I've tried really hard to have a non-regional dialect, <laughs> right, right, musically right. speaking. Yeah, 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 um, totally. And, and and maybe it's a little bit of the imitation game, but that's that's yeah. part of it. But yeah, so this Supro, this is a 1960 Tweed Deluxe. Oh, um, sexy. That I that I run a lot. This is a 1967 Marshall Plexi 50 watt. This is. I'll get some of this stuff. Uh, matchless. This is a. a a 90s era HC30. I've had this amp forever and ever and ever. I I think I bought it for fourteen hundred dollars at Rock Block back in the day. Rock right. Block guitars. We, yeah. we were talking about how crazy some of these amps have have gone. <laughs> crazy. This is a 1960 Fender Bassman head. Uh, 501 chorus tape tape echo reverb unit. And then this thing is. Um, the knob. Yeah, what is that weird? Man, it's an it's an old uh, tone generator oscillator thing that this these guys um, made into an amp, oh. and it, you know the quirkiest of the quirk. Like yeah. this is a, you know, when you want lo-fi AM radio or play some slide or something, yeah. it's like this is that amp that gets used like a handful of times a year, but when it gets used, it's perfect. Yeah, 
Um, and it's so, it's just so, the footprint's so small, it's so easy to keep it in the rig. And, yeah. it's, and it's a good conversation. But it's literally like, this is the volume. <laughs> and, and, You're um, one control. Yeah, yeah and, and, and that's the thing. So yeah, with all these amps, it's just a constant switch around. And there's some other stuff that rotates in and out of the, again, there's a triple rec, a Mesa Boogie thing that, that'll come in and out. I've got a Friedman that I love uh, that's good for some of the rock stuff too that comes comes in and out. And I, I've got a, you know, again at my studio, I've got, a, a, you know, unfortunately a pile of, you know, other old, you know, Fender amps and yeah. we'll rotate. But I'd say this has been kind of the lineup for, for quite a while. Well, and the, the one gig we did together was that TV thing. And all you had was a deluxe. You carried in yeah. a tiny deluxe. Yeah. And like maybe one guitar yeah. and a tiny pedal board. I probably board. had that Telecaster. Yeah, yeah. I think you had. Yeah. I think you had that Tele. Yeah. A deluxe. Yeah, a little little pedal board. And, and that's it was. A, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Well, I mean, so you can do it yeah. with that, but why not? Well, at and, all? and the thing I always like try to stress to people too is like, you know, I didn't just wake up one day and go spend like a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> yeah, on all this right. stuff. Like, right. I I acquired these things over decades, and yeah. and especially and even too a lot back when they were like I remember buying Princeton reverbs for six hundred dollars. Right. Oh well, yeah. And I've got a few. You know, I've had people <laughs> say things like, "Man, you've got." Oh, actually, story. I went to sell some pedals recently, and um, they were these Klon clone things that that the company JHS had made, yeah. and I I had a stack of them, and I went to As sell you them. Do. I went to sell them at Carter <laughs> Vintage and. They were like, hey, do you know how much these things are going for now? And I was like, no. You know, and they kind of gave me a price, and I was like, oh, wow. And they were like, yeah, so like, do you want to hold on to them? And I was like, no, I, I'll sell these three. I have two more back at the house. <laughs> but, but, and they, they all kind of got wide-eyed. I was like, yeah, but dude, I, I bought this for like 150 bucks, you know, years ago. And it was right. like, I had a few pedal boards, and I wanted one on each one, and then I bought a couple spares. And I, yeah, I didn't buy them when they were $1,200 each, right. you know? So it's, yeah. a, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm quick to remind everybody that like, the, you know, not only do you not have to do this, I don't know anybody that would just go out tomorrow and spend that much money to, <laughs> I'm gonna play sessions, I'm just drop a hundred grand here, yeah. or whatever, the, whatever the price is, yeah. all this crap, you know? <laughs> pedals included, you know, pedal board, Ooh, so. Which is a perfect segue. Yeah. Let's talk about the mothership, about this mm. thing right here. So, um, XTS, Exact Tone Solutions here in Nashville. These guys are great. They're, they're great. Barry and, and Greg, all those guys, man. Um, they built, I've got three boards that they've built for me of, of various kind of sizes. My main A-Rig board that they built for me, I had it for, I do think it was 10 years solid without ever tweaking it, like hmm. without ever changing anything on it. It was always the way. Impressive, because it's, yeah. it's hard not to change it, yeah. right? And, um, <laughs> And I just kind of, there were a couple things I wanted to change. Well, really, this kind of amp switching thing was the biggest. That was actually the okay. litmus for. Yeah, let's hear how you're doing that. That's a good. So they were the one. So I went to those guys and said, hey, this is what I would like to do. Can you help me figure out what the best way to, to accomplish this is? And they, as they do, they asked me, you know, 100 questions and 50 of them I had never considered. And I'm like, oh, I'm really glad you asked me that because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be important to me. And, <laughs> and, you know, they talked me into going to this switching rig. So this is the gig rig, G3 is the company. Sure. Um, and I had always been really hesitant to do any kind of switching system like this. I was always a guy that just had a pedal board. Right. Um, and in fact, my other two boards don't have any switching on. They're much smaller. But they explained how it was going to work and the layout of it. And I was like, okay, that's, I'm cool with that. One of the things I like most about it is that there's just not a lot of like hidden screen menus. Yeah. It's all still pretty tactile, which I like. Um, but case in point, that was the, you know, the reasoning for, well, I guess it's, let's do this new board so I can get all this switching figured out. And then it was like, well, and I do have a couple of these other pedals I've kind of been, I'd always been keeping on the side and can we just implement it all and can we, and, and again, you look at this big stupid thing and you go, you know, it's like it should be able to, you know, land the space shuttle. <laughs> this is just such a, you know, it's a luxury and I'm aware of that. And, you know, this, my cartridge guys, God bless them. Richie and all the dudes at Soundcheck, and they they set me up. They get all this stuff to where I need to be to work, and 
I would have never built something like this if I was trying to put it in my car or whatever. You yeah, just, right. You just go, no. In fact, it literally, this doesn't even have like a case. It goes inside of one of my trunks. and So just that sort of thing. But um, the... Um, the, 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 the switching thing was really great, and they, you know, the exact tone guys are really great about doing um, custom interfaces. It's a big part of what they do, and so I've got an interface on the front here that has really three amp outlines. It's got a, you know, what I kind of call amp one and two. Yeah. And then it's got a third line um, that um, the intention there is Sometimes I'm tracking a guitar part and the cabinet's in the closet or it's you know in another location and it's mic'd up. Um, but it's cool to have a, an amp in the room with you because oh, like yeah. for feedback or whatever, or sometimes you can turn on the drum room mics and you get a cool room sound. So basically what that enables me to do is I can flip on a combo in the room and send an extra signal to that amp and it doesn't change anything about oh. the, the main signal going to my main the you know really the meat of the guitar sound yeah. right um and so so you know again w via switching i can you know i could i could be running all three at once but i the way i use it the is engineers kinda, love that yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got it. Um, well it did when i got this when i kind of did this thing you know even even me after years of being in town the first couple times i rolled into studios and i was like hey here's what we're gonna do and a couple of the engineers were like uh, uh okay <laughs> Well, why? And I was like, man, just, it, it, it'll make sense. Like, yeah. once you see me do it a couple times, and then, you know, and it, you know. Yeah. not that it was like some groundbreaking idea, but the implementation of, of it as a new workflow was different for, sure. for all of us. Yeah. And I was getting used to the switcher and everything. Um, but so, yeah, they, they built that interface, and then all the pedals run into this switcher, and you can, you know, basically just kind of set scenes. Um, and you know it, the so this will the one switch I can swap any combination of the amps themselves and the pedals, um, and so that's a you know that's that's how I use it. Yeah. And, um, and and man, again, days. You know the session I was on today for for, for Marin Morris. It was like a lot of the sounds were really organic, and I didn't do any switching. I kind of used. In fact, I played the Tweed Deluxe all day. Oh really. And I didn't really do a lot of switching. I switched guitars around, but it was kind of like, it was all needed to be kind of rootsy guitar. And yeah. that's what it called for. And I didn't do a bunch of big scene changes and stuff. But on the days when it's called for, you know, I, it was just nothing like the old times when you, I'm trying to like step on three pedals going into the verse. <laughs> right. Um, While you're reading the chart. And, yeah, uh, oh, there's that too. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. that too. Um, but, but really thankful for the XTS guys. They've, They've, they've thought of and solved problems before they're ever problems for me, so. Well, take us through it, like, boot to bonnet, what's all on here, pedal-wise. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'll just go on this top row. Yeah. Trusty Rusty, Line 6, M9. Oh, I'm man. a huge... Everybody has one. Anybody, yeah, I mean, anybody <laughs> that knows me knows, too, and, it, you know, I've, I, I get these questions, I've said this on other interviews, like, do you have it modded? You, no, it's the stock one. I, you know, I've yeah. got like four of these. It's it. They're great. They're awesome. They sound great. I've used this thing on more records than I can imagine, and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I specifically use the reverbs a lot. Um, there's a couple cool fuzz patches on there, um, huh. and um, uh, I've used a lot of the the mods and filter stuff. It's it's just a really great pedal, and it's impossible to get that much stuff. You know, even on a board like this, the the kind of bang for real estate buck right. that you get out of that is unbeatable. Yeah, I've done gigs where I've just taken that. <laughs> like I've walked in with a, a line six and a combo amp, and and and, yeah. and it's great. Yeah. So, um, and I'll I'll come back to this thing in the middle here. I've got my timeline, Strymon timeline delay, and Strymon Mobius, and I use those exactly how you'd think delays and modulations. And I just think those pedals sound great. I like the way they work. They're 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 great. Um, this thing in the middle. Um, yeah, what's that weird? Yeah, though? it's so it's called the uh, Mission Expressionator, and it's attached to an expression pedal here. And what this does is it allows me to control any one of these three pedals, or any combination of those pedals with 
the one expression pattern. Oh, well, that's really clever. Yeah, so if I am wanting to, to, to tweak, you know, if I want to use it for delays, which I do a lot, you know, it's set there, and then this is the Mobius, and then this is the M9, and then if I want to tweak, like, the, 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 the delay and, you know, open a filter on this at the same time, you just can kind of select a secondary one, or you can select all of them. That's um, a great idea. Yeah, and so... Um, so again, it was kind of a space-saving maneuver, uh, uh, but you know, because I would sometimes, uh, you know, I'll use WAS in this and the M9. I'll use, again, I talk about filter sweep stuff where I was doing delay gags with the expression pedal there, and then I've kind of moved on and use, you know, use it for all three of these for different different reasons. Sometimes you want to lengthen a delay trail, and you also want to turn modulation up on the Mobius, and you can kind of set all those parameters. It takes a, a fair amount of tweaking. Yeah. Um, but I did kind of did a lot of that stuff so long ago. I, I mean, I'll give you an example. So like the delay, this is a thing that I do a lot is, um, let me see here. Oh, so I've got like a little slap back delay on here, right? Um, and then way I've got it set right now is I can control the mix and the, the repeats with the delay pedal. So I can Whoa. Right? So you can go so that with it with it, you know, that's the that's the setting I have saved, yeah. but I could also go. Or I oh, could go. Yeah. And then the other cool thing, you know, that I can do sometimes when I'm playing slide is like, you know, you can control the, the trail so you're Also use it as a kind of a live blend because I sometimes just get in the exact right, you know, delay kind of thing on a track. I'm gonna turn the tremolo off on this amp, but like, so again, that's kind of the that's kind of the, the sound I've got. Yeah. But I can go. So I can control all that stuff with my foot. You know, it's interesting that you have the heel down. I know it brings it's it up, and then your volume is heel deep. So let me tell you why I do it that way. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. Because counterintuitive. It's completely counterintuitive, and I've done it this way for years and years and years and years and years. And it's because when it was in the when I had it the traditional way. Yeah. You feel like you're so, falling forward? Well, sometimes the <laughs> no, it had nothing to do with me. Sometimes the drummer, or whatever, you get rocking in the room, and the pedal would just start to fall. Right. And then the delays and stuff would get out of hand, and so I just decided that I want the off position to always be down. Great idea, because those in those because it's kind of idiot proof. Right. In those Dunlops, I find the longer I play them, they lose all that res uh, yeah. resistance. Yeah, and, and I mean, so many pedals do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just attrition of yeah. plastic so, so, and metal. Yeah, so, so for, for me, it was always just kind of like the idea of, and I'll do, again, we're doing this stuff fast, and just for the idea of it just being like, it's off. Yeah. Like, that was always the way, and again, so yeah, it's very, you know, if you watch me do this with my feet, <laughs> it, it's like you're flying a helicopter. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, right. but I've done it, I've done it this way for so long, um, that it, it's just ingrained. It's it's just ingrained in in my brain the way it works, you know. So yeah. Um, in fact, when they rebuilt this pedal, they, they the pedal board, they were like, "Do you hey, want it like that?" Yeah, they literally said that. I go, "Yep, don't change it. Don't don't yeah. leave it exactly how it is because they would mess my brain up." So yeah, like that. that's funny. Uh, okay, so pedals. Yeah, okay. Next, okay, micro synth. Here's a funny story. Okay, from old from old Wheezy here. Yeah. Okay. I bought this pedal because I wanted to, thought it would be cool, tried it out at my, I bought it online, tried it at my house, thought, it's cool, I'll, I'll use this. Yeah. Um, I'd had a pog on my board for years and was just kind of like, I um, feel like I've done everything I can do with this pedal, I'm mix it up, you know. Yeah. Had him put it on this board, it worked for one day, 
and it's it doesn't even work. It's, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it it won't pass signal when it's on. <laughs> so that I it literally I I have never used this pedal. Okay, on like a session. harmonics. If you're listening. Send this man a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, the good thing is, is the footprint of these pedals, I could certainly swap it out for some other stuff, but by the time, and I couldn't return it because they had already, it's got Velcro on it. And yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, all right. Yeah. So I, it looks so good. It looks awesome. <laughs> it, it sounded awesome for about a day, for yeah. about three hours. It sounded awesome. So that's it. Um, Peterson Strobo Tuner. Just the best tuners ever. Sure, I, love I, I'm, I'm I'm a big big fan. Did you ever use any of their sweetening stuff? I never did. I, that's that was one Pandora's box. I just thought better left. Sure. It's got, you know in in, uh, in uh, Spinal Tap when they're like police said best leave that unsolved. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was kind of how I felt about that. I, yeah. I like tuning enough. I don't need to get into any extra. Yeah. Right. It's its own thing. Yeah, let 440 be 440. Yeah, at least for me. You know. <laughs> um, MXR uh, bass compressor. I think they've actually renamed these now. Oh, really? Um, but when I got this thing years and years and years ago, you know, it was kind of pitched to me as like, this is their version of an 1176 in a box, yeah. um, which we all know is not true. But this is a really transparent really really clean sounding what i would call a you know studio an outboard gear style compressor sure we, well and it, it never you're nothing and i think it's been have you been running this much here because I, I nothing is sound compressed no it's not it's i mean no i haven't had it in the chain okay. at all because um, I thought, that's really transparent well it is though <laughs> um and it's uh uh, because here, I mean, I will show you. It, it is really transparent. You can see the reduction a little bit. Because with humbuckers, I don't like humbuckers with compressors, but that's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's, and I've got it set subtly. And and again, it's all usage, right? Like. There are times when, like the you know, I've got a old red Dynacomp out there in my drawer. It's like when you want that sound right. or that thing, or the, even like the Brent Mason, the, the Boss Blue. Like yeah. when you're going for a thing, those are all great. Yeah. But in the kind of universal usage, you know, thing that has always been really effective for me. Yeah. And again, I think they, I for years was telling them, I was like, you know, how many of these you'd sell if you just didn't call it a bass compressor? Because nobody. <laughs> right. But right. Anyways, that's that's a thing. Um, uh, this we talked about it a little bit beforehand. This tilt overdrive, yeah, right. Rev, Rev, my buddy Sean Tubbs, everybody knows how great that guy is. Yeah, he's and great. we met Tour, and he was in Kerry Underwood's band. I was playing for Josh years ago. And you know, Sean is not a self promoter, and he's never the kind of guy to you know hype himself. And so, when he rarely when he calls me and is like, Hey, I got something I think you should check out. I'm like, dude, yeah, what, you know, <laughs> just here's my credit card. Send it yeah. to me, you know, but man, I was just really blown away with how this overdrive sounds. And, and when I had this board built, I specifically built it to have it right here at my foot because I love the boost so much and I wanted access to, um, to just be able to hit that boost whenever I wanted to right here. And the, the overdrive sounds great, but it's just a really great sound and, um, pedal. It's, it's actually the one, this whole time when I've been kicking on overdrive, that's what I've been doing. And, um, and it's, uh, and this, the EQ stuff is also cool. I mean, you can get into, Yeah, that's I great. always say like pe like pedals like this like you, you kind of can't make it sound bad. You can make it sound different, but and then you put the boost on. So I love that pedal. John yeah. outdid himself. Um, really, really great. Uh, Boss volume pedal. Um, I always used the Dunlop volume pedal. When we built this board, I, I kind of had to switch to the Boss because I needed more outputs. And it's taken some getting used to. 
I was traumatized for <laughs> about a month, but now now I'm I'm used to it. I've got it got it figured out. Um, trusty Rusty RC booster, the, all just a classic boost. Uh, we're kind of in gain stage world, right? RC booster, the exact XTS Winford overdrive, which I love. Uh, an Ibanez Mostortion, which has been rehoused because uh, those old switches suck. And then I've got a couple EQ pedals um, with just different. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. And with the with the XDS. Yeah, and and they uh, one of these is their standard kind of mod that they sell, and then I, there's one that I had that kind of got some more specific frequencies that they did for me. Do you ever run them at the same both at the same time? Um, rarely. Yeah. It has happened. Um, it mostly came from I wanted independent EQs for the two different amps. Sure. Um, and uh, but they but they do have a, there's a couple key frequencies that make me go to one or another depending on on some some different things. But but again, that we're, we're back to this like you know when we're when you're in a dense kind of recording. And there's this harmonic battle, you know, what you what you kind of right. learn after years of making records is like everything can't sound huge. Yeah. Right? right? And as a guitar player, you know, when you're coming up, the worst thing somebody can say is like his tone's thin, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, you're just devastated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the, re the reality is you can't, you know, when you, when you play on a ton of records, like everything can't be huge. Everything yeah. can't be louder than everything else. Right. And sometimes, you know, you're in a supportive space and you, you're trying to find this, this right part to speak in the chorus a certain way. And certainly with great engineers, they can do a lot of stuff to help on their end. But, but sometimes just like knocking a little bit of extra bottom end off of a tone or rolling a little bit of top end off or boosting a little bit of, you know, some of the mid-range frequencies like small moves can get you, and also the way that your amp and the tubes and the speakers all react to that stuff. Again, to the, the earlier conversation is like, the, the EQ moves done pre the amp will sound different and respond different than the EQ moves done after the mic. Right. You know, and sometimes it needs to happen there and sometimes it needs to happen here. Sometimes it's both. Yeah. Um, but if you can give the engineer something right, Ideally, they won't have to do anything. That, I mean, that, that, you know, yeah. yeah, it's like that's the you, you. I just am trying to get people as close to the finished product as I can. Right, right. And then, you know, I'll take all the help I can get from that side yeah. of the board, but I want the starting source to be, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to help us, you know, troubleshoot. So. Right, rather than say, you guys fix it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we already talked about my expression pedal. And yeah, then this, and then this, this weirdo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what is this weirdo? The, um, the XP 1000. Uh, this is a, a weird internet relic. I, I, I think you can find them. I, I, it was hard for me to source this one when I sourced it. I, I only know one other guy that has one. Um, but essentially, there were a line of Digitech pedals that they made that, you know, ranged from, you know, there was the old original Whammy pedal. There was one that was all of their, like, cool reverbs. There was yeah. one that was a lot of their modulations and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And the... A couple people figured out that if you bought one specific model, you could mod it to do all of them. So this pedal has been, I think it's on, it's been modded to, um, with an extra switch and some other things so that it can do uh, all kinds of stuff. Let me see how I get it on here. Well, now it's, oh, I gotta turn it on. Yeah, there we go. Um, so like this, you know, I've got, it can do WAP. Um, it can do um, cool, uh, I think this is like modulation stuff. Yeah, Les and in this thing you can tell the pedal like controls the speed of the Leslie. Right? Um, and then there's a reverb one and there's some other stuff and you can get to the old whammy stuff, but again, just kind of a big bang for your, bang for your buck pedal. Um, there's like three or four sounds on there that are just like super rad that it would be worth having just for those. Yeah. But it does so much stuff and there's so many cool things on this. The hardest part is just remembering where everything is. Right. <laughs> just, yeah. It's 
it's, it's number three and it's, it's setting 32 um, and kind of scrolling up and down in the banks is a pain in the ass. I'm yeah, that's more of like an overdub. Give me a minute. Dig, <laughs> yes. dig around. Yes. Or you just have like your handful of go-tos, you know. So. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, that's the whole, I think that's everything. I think I covered all of this. Yeah. But, well, Derek, this has really, really been uh, fun and educational. And I think this guy, say the name of that again. Um, I believe the company's called Mission, um, and it's it's called an Expressionator. Expressionator. Is the, is the thing. Um, yeah, and there's a couple other dudes I've seen that have it. You know, it's certainly not proprietary. Um, that's, I've never seen, that's such a great idea, man. And I, the XTS guy, again, that's one of those where, you know, those dudes at, at XTS, and you go to them and you're like, I want to be able to do this and this and this. And they're, they're like, okay, let me think. Have you heard of one of these? Or they'll yeah. say, well, we can w wire it this way. Or, you know, that's the, the beauty of going to pros like that is they've just built so many rigs at this point. They, they know all the pain points and all the, yeah. you know. And again, they'll bring up stuff like, well, would you ever want to be able to run this while you run it? And I go, oh, yeah, I would yeah. definitely need to do that. And they're like, yep, okay, we got you. We'll that's it great. Out. So they're, they're awesome. They're great dudes. Now, the, the last ingredient, uh, picks and slides. What do you tend to use? Oh, Here's your Pandora's box right here. Yeah, yeah right. This thing, um, picks. So I would say home base for me has probably always been just these these Dunlop Purple 1.14 Tortex. Lately, I've, I've I enjoy these Flow. It's the same. It's the Dunlop, but the, the shape is slightly different. For some reason, I like the way they'll sit in my hands. Here's my capo. Um, you can see in this thing, man, I've got a ton. You got one of everything. Yeah, and it, it's it's just situational, man, because, like I said, I definitely have home base. I definitely have picks that feel better to, like, solo with or whatever the case. Right. But, but man, occasionally you, you want a, a thinner thing. Maybe you're, maybe you're strumming on electric and you don't quite want the heavy attack. Sometimes you want to brighten a part just slightly. And actually, just the quickest way to do it is swap to a thinner pick, and it'll right. immediately kind of brighten. You don't have to really touch anything. It's a yeah. small move. You can do all that kind of stuff. I mean, of course, acoustic players do that kind of thing all the time. But, yeah, I, I've, I've got all these things in here because it, it's, it's kind of a, again, these are quick decisions. I don't sit out here and opine over what pick I should use. But <laughs> I'm kind of just getting a sound, and I grab a couple, and, and, I, and it, pretty quickly you just go, oh, yeah, this is this. And... And every once in a while you get into a song and you go, this is not working. I need to just go back to this or I need something heavier or whatever the case is. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's an always evolving kind of thing with me. It, it never, uh, it, it, there, there's never like really a guy. The purple ones are the closest thing to a guy. Um, and, uh, and I like a Fender medium. That's a good, you know, Fender medium is a good all around. That's sure. Just a, Kind of classic sounding pick, but you know, all the, I've got nylon picks in here. I've got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Slides, it's pretty much always this, these Dunlop, whatever this size glass slide is. I actually say that, I've already lied. I use this 90% of the time. Uh, if I'm playing Dobro, like resonator stuff, or sometimes when I'm playing ste the fake steel, like if I'm really diving into the fake steel thing. Yeah. I will use a, their metal version, sure, because it, it they're, they're denser and they do have a little more sustain. It's a different sound than the glass. But I use this size glass, and I'm a pinky slide guy I, for whatever reason. That's just the way it has always been for me. I wear it right there. Um, but these are the these things are floating around. They're in my car. They're, I've got these. <laughs> right. They're everywhere. On my break, desk, there's like six of them. Hundreds of them every year. It, yeah, they <laughs> they all you know. It's like you just, I can't can't have enough of these things. Yeah. But that's that's the. That's the slot I always use all the time, man. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, hey, man, this has been great. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging great with us to today. See you. Thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, y'all, till next time. Cheers.